to escape art school with very few technical skills. Um, but mo so mostly, I approach problems or projects conceptually. So that just usually means that I start from uh, with an idea, and then I figure out what medium makes sense to communicate with or through. Um, so like, you might notice that there's very little welding or chiseling or um, work you can walk in or around uh, in my body of work. And that's intentional. Although, when I left school, I, so what, this is one of my, I kind of made a conscious decision to drift in to a performance direction for a long time. Um, so this is a piece called The Top of Bell Jar that was maybe one of the last pieces I made in art school that I'm willing to show people, <laughs> um, where I attempted to read the, the book of Bell Jar at Top of Bell in one sitting as kind of like an endurance performance, but also a video. Uh, <laughs> and so that it exists in a form of like a video that's not like good to watch, but you know, a document of something that actually happened. Um, I moved on to kind of, outside of school, I had the opportunity to organize a lot of performance series, and often in doing this, objects and documentation were really important. Uh, so I organized this series called Difficult Women that was a feminist performance art series and kind of the unique aspect of that was it was funded through the sales of puff painted garments, specifically sports bras. <laughs> but uh, that was like a really purely collaborative project just because it got to involve a lot of people from uh, visual merchandising friends who kind of copy culture, uh, added an installation element to it, good friends got to perform and be documented in the garments. Um, I guess my point in showing this work is to say that although was, I was steadily marching to performance, um, objects and images have been like an important thing throughout. So making posters for shows I always thought was kind of a way of packaging like an aesthetic event. Um, I did a project called Cartoon Research Lab, uh, a general public collective, which was like a screening series where um, participants would organize sets of cartoons and give talks ranging from uh, very formal to very informal, and those were guided around different seasonal themes. Um, it had a food aspect as well, kind of like a breakfast potluck, which also had a cartoonish bent to it. Um, comments and cartoons are a big influence on me. I'll talk more about that and show you where that's shown up. This is a day in the life of the Cartoon Research Lab at GPC. <laughs> I got into, so I guess, in making more performance work, the idea was that I didn't want to be in a studio working alone. Like, I wanted to be with people. I thought it was more important and kind of like, just, more on point with what I cared about to uh, be out of a space, like be with my buds, be making work that was alive and kind of like had dimensions that were variable. So uh, this is a project where I was making these scarves that were based on like Hermes and Versace, kind of like high fashion um, scarves that were then, so I would make images and have them printed as scarves and then we would document how to wear them, like, <laughs> with the idea that it was like, <laughs> uh, like low life hobbies, like instead of uh, equestrian and, uh, you know, ballooning, uh, our hobbies were, uh, you know, shoplifting and <laughs> dumpster diving. <laughs> 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 Um, 
But this is to say that drawing has also been a really important part of my practice. It has been something that, like, although I'm like, I don't think I need to draw, I don't think anyone needs to draw, I haven't put it down. Like, there just isn't really, nothing really, like, scratches the itch that drawing seems to, like, no, nothing is the same as drawing or making images. So although I try to think my way out of it, um, just keep coming back to it. And that's kind of what this show has been about. Oh, and then, obviously, this maybe a project that many people have participated in or seen me do recently has been to, um, I did How to Use My Live Art talk show that's currently on hiatus. But um, I, I made a point throughout every episode to challenge myself to like make objects or make props that would be as part of like to be used in games or kind of but also as weird like teaching tools to kind of like integrate my obsession with like art history into them so like maybe that's like in the form of I made this noodle horse this horse set of pool noodles it's based off a, a Deborah Butterfield sculpture or like a, a <laughs> games where people have to dig for flags and uh, objects that kind of look like Nikki to St. Paul sculptures, but um, just it was it's important to me to like be able to make objects for stuff. Um, so I am going to go back to art school, um, early early work that had where some of the themes that I started like have traveled through into the work that you see in the gallery right now. This was a rag rug that I made out of Halloween costumes. So it was Spider-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, The Thing, maybe something else is in there. But like, I guess I started doing work like this. It was with like an interest in both process-based stuff that was just kind of like, like I said, just the that physical act of making, but um, maybe I was interested in like kind of Americana, but also like Halloween. So Halloween is like this idea of being like, I don't know, a uh, collective transformation or something about like disguise or thinking about like um, just kind of, I don't know. Anyway, I, the Halloween thing was like a weird, it just feels really art school to me at this point, but like, um, but it's funny because I feel like some of these things kind of show up in the, the body of work that I'm showing right now. Um, I also was making hex signs at the time, which were based on, um, so I think that was like another kind of like, like occult Americana, like, you know, spooky thing that I was like a little bit fascinated by, but like, that's been a continued interest where um, so hex signs and are you can be found can be found in like barns and like Pennsylvania Pennsylvania Dutch culture <laughs> and um, I was making my own hex signs this these also kind of cartoonish like approaches to like this was a hex sign to guard to guard against ugly living <laughs> um, I, I don't know I feel like that stuff shows up and so. Yeah, and some of that work definitely has made its way in this show that you'll see in that gallery. Um, yeah, just, they're also just really beautiful. Like in addition to what a, the, the mystery around like what hex signs are, which is I think they're supposed to keep witches out of your barn or something. <laughs> um, just the graphic quality and the like bold beautiful lines are something that has fascinated me for a long time. Um, I grew up Catholic. I spent a lot of time looking at banners, like handmade banners in church. Um, I think that has informed my fascination with applique in some ways, which there are several applique pieces in the show. Um, and kind of like cut paper, where it's just like these really clean, really like simple and I think lovely like shapes that are just kind of like, you know, so flat and so like stark against like a background like that um, appeals to me a lot. Um, I also think they're funny. 
<laughs> so I feel like the like the influence of that like can be found in like a piece like this. Um, at the same time, like stitching has been something that, for some reason, I've been attracted to just the physical act of stitching. Like I said, I, when I was making those rag rugs in school, it was kind of like art that I could also make while I like, talk to people. Um, you know, it wasn't something that I needed like the front of my brain to do. It's like something that like made the back of my brain feel good. But um, and that need is still there. So like, you know, that comes out with making work like that. Um, I was going to show you some of the source material for that particular. <laughs> I see so many similarities between like work I made in 2008 and work, work that I made like, you know, in 2018. Um, just kind of about the piece. That piece is about getting fucked up, but um, and it's inspired by. Uh, this is a last last gasp last gasp uh, printed these bootleg comics of little Lulu like having a psychedelic experience where she smokes doll hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so weird. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but also like, you know, the graphic simplicity of like little Lulu or, you know, Ernie Bushmiller's Nancy or whatever, just like undeniable. Can't let them go. Love them a lot. <laughs> Obviously I'm not the only artist to look at <coughs> banners like that. Mike Kelly, um, is a huge influence on me. Everything you can think of to do, Mike Kelly's already done. Um, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, he is a pretty conscious influence on me. <laughs> I was I mentioned the thing about uh, having this kind of lifelong obsession with stitching. This is this is like embarrassing, but this is like. Uh, patch that I made on the back of my sweatshirt that I like wore when I was like 18. <laughs> and it's like, it's, I, I like searched to find this. <laughs> it's like a terrible picture. But like I see so many similarities with this and the like little Lulu thing where it's even like a grid. Like <laughs> but it's like kinda like self-conscious dumb dumb art. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to show, I, I found that from the archives for you guys. Um, I guess that's kind of like, maybe like an implicit part of punk subculture that I don't really like. It's just all like gurgling inside there where it's like, yeah, you definitely like sew the patches onto your sweatshirt. Like, why wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> so um, that's just found new outlets this decade. Um, <laughs> I'm an art teacher. I am a teaching artist, at least part time. Um, and there are some, and so I feel like references to art history often crop up in my work, um, just because, like I said, it's an obsession. But also, it's kind of like maybe maybe part of my my pedagogy or something to like put it in your eyes too. Um, I guess when I'm thinking of deep influences. This is like an old, this is a piece from 2017. Um, this is another one too. Uh, my mom was an IPS teacher, and I was always really conscious that like the toys that she had in her classroom were like dated. Like, you know, even as a child, when I was like helping her like organize her classroom, I was like, these toys are old. <laughs> <laughs> but they were also like so appealing to me. So like the letter people and kind of like, just like hard edged like wooden toys that she like had in her classroom or things that maybe like the color palettes and the materials and stuff um, just have like a real visceral appeal that I think also shows up in that work there. Um, like I said, art history is a fascination. This is a piece uh, by Frank Stella on the left. Um, Anarcho-punk is also an influence. That's the Crafts logo on the right. I feel like I just have these, like these similar things like laying on my table, and I was like, I'm gonna paint it. <laughs> I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a shaped painting. <laughs> and then it took me like four years to do it. But um, it, I don't know if it's important to me that people like recognize when they see my work. Uh, that they have that language, that they like necessarily can um, relate both of those things back to their origins. But I do think 
often I make references where, you know, if you do have that information, it does reveal a, another layer of, I guess, enjoyment. Um, some other influences that have made it into the show. This is an image by Barbara Kruger. Um, she's awesome. Um, I wanted to show <clears throat> some Shaker gift drawings, just because this is just another like influence or kind of like maybe just gold standard of like work. I think is like extremely beautiful, extremely inspiring. Often made by women who like didn't have formal training, who maybe were, you know, receiving what they believe to be like transmissions from God or from some, you know, spiritual place where they were making these these drawings. Um, and this has been like another type of image that I like gravitate toward again and again. Um, what is this? this image is by Polly Collins from 1854. But um, I think as I've kind of made my way back to drawing more and away from performance, it's because there's just something like beyond words that you can do with drawing. And that's, you know, it's just an undeniable like thing, thing you have to, to do. <laughs> so um, this kind of, I think about like, the meditative state that I get into through drawing or through stitching and just, you know, it's not always something that you can locate exactly, but it's just kind of the urgency of being able to like get to that place through process and <coughs> repetition is important to me. Um, and also just kind of like, I guess one of the beautiful things about like making drawings is that you don't have to necessarily explain what they're about. like. You know, I think with this body of work, I, I was trying to be, I was just kind of wayfinding. Like, you know, I was finding images that made sense to me, that made some visual sense in my brain, kind of collaging them together, and then just leaving it open-ended. And I, that kind of is liberating to me in certain ways. Um, I wanted to, I think this is my last image, I wanted to end on this Helma of Clint. Uh, painting because I definitely had a book of her work on my desk like throughout the time that I was creating the show. Um, she's another one of those painters that was technically untrained. She's kind of enjoying her resurgence right now, but a person who just kind of, you know, painted from a state of not knowing exactly what they were trying to say or what they were going to say, but knowing that they had to say it. Um, and that has been kind of inspirational in me uh, as I've just been returning to drawing and just kind of not questioning it. Um, and just finding that like, yeah, it feels good and it's cool and exciting to me that other people enjoy it and connect with it too. So, um, thank you. I don't have any fancy uh, images or anything, so I thought we could just go in the gallery for this talk and have points of reference. <laughs> Just told me. Okay.